Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about California. Um, you know, California is probably, I don't know, from my perspective, maybe the nicest place to live on planet Earth. It, it, it has almost perfect weather. It gets a little too cold in the winter. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, but it gets a little bit cold in the winter as compared to, let's say, Puerto Rico but, or, or Florida. But it does, but it's, it's I mean, San Diego, I, I don't think there's a better place uh, to be. It's, it's, it's uh, warm weather, but it never gets super hot. Uh, winters are very mild. It almost never rains. It never rains in the summer in Southern California. Uh, Northern California is beautiful, rolling hills. Further north you go, you get forests. It, you could, it, from where I lived in California, you could be at the beach in uh, 30 minutes. You could be skiing in 40 minutes in the winter. Uh, you can go to the desert. You can, you can get to snow. You can get to beach. It, 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 there's just a variety of scenery. The possibilities that you have uh, are just stunning. It's it's just a beautiful place. It's also um, new, so uh, you know the infrastructure is new. The infrastructure is easy to manage. Uh, the, the shopping malls, the the, the streets. There are there are good toll roads that get you places. The only real downside in California is traffic, and as we'll see. That might be, there might be some uh, pressures taking care of that. It's also an incredibly productive place, right? So California is a place in which incredibly productive individuals live, uh, whether it is in Los Angeles, which used to be uh, in Orange County, which used to be home to, um, uh, to kind of a lot of the, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, um, you know, military hardware, uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, you know, people who built uh, planes and, and all kind of military technology. That kind of went away during the 90s after the Berlin Wall came down, but a lot of high tech, of course, Hollywood, uh, and, uh, you know, and a lot of show business in LA. But then if you go down to San Diego, you've got a lot of biotech. Uh, Qualcomm is, is in Orange County. You've got a lot of tech and biotech in that area. And then you go to North, and of course, you've got maybe the most productive area in the whole country, which is uh, the Bay Area, where you've got the most incredible companies in the world, the envy of the entire world. Every country in the world wants its own Silicon Valley. Uh, and you've got one of the most beautiful cities in the world, San Francisco. So if you overall take, take California uh, generally, California is, uh, you know, an amazing place. Dave says California is superficial and phony. New York is much better. No, it's not. That's just not true, particularly not the Bay Area. There's nothing phony about the Bay Area. When I was there in the 90s, and, it, you know, you could drive around at 2 o'clock in the morning, and at the high-tech companies, there were lights on because people were working. Uh, it was, it, it, I, there is no place more productive, even today, uh, than Silicon Valley, and uh, it's where innovation happens. It's where people work hard. They 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 produce, uh, they create, they build. Uh, the leading companies in the country, the mo the highest growth companies in the country, uh, and all the innovations are products of Silicon Valley. So you might prefer New York. I you know I prefer New York, although I'm not sure I want to live in New York, but to visit. But in terms of if you're ambitious, if you're young, ambitious, technology minded. And, uh, you know, entrepreneurial, there is literally no better place, no better place than, uh, than California. And uh, if you add to that uh, the weather, it is the perfect place to live, except for the fact that the politicians of California, and really the residents, because they vote for the politicians and they support the politicians, have basically destroyed the state. They have taken a state that is unbelievably productive, that, uh, w which is the fountainhead of innovation in the United States, a place that has amazing scenery, amazing weather, and, and amazing people. And they basically, slowly, systematically created disincentives to live there. Whether it's difficulties in opening a business, uh, if you're not in tech, they, they give all kinds of special 
carve-outs for tech companies. Uh, employ, whether it's the fact that it's impossible, almost impossible, to fire somebody in Texas, in Texas again, in California. Almost impossible to fire somebody in California. Uh, it's um, whether it's the fact that uh, there are, uh, you know, I, I'll give you an example. It's very, very difficult to get permission to do, um, you know, very, very difficult to get permission to do uh, outdoor dining in California. Uh, during the pandemic, the, uh, the regulators loosened the regulations. And there's this amazing amount of outdoor dining in California uh, during the pandemic. And of course, what better place, what better place um, to have outdoor dining than California, where it's, it's, it not only is it warm, but it's also not humid, it's dry. So in that sense, it's, it's perfect weather, much better than, let's say, Austin, Texas. It's, Austin is colder in the winter, uh, rainier in the summer, and way, way more humid than California. Weather-wise, California has, has it by a long shot over a place like Austin. So outdoor dining suddenly became popular. But now that the pandemic is, quote, over, I wish, regulations are coming back. And basically, regulators are going out and they're shutting down all the outdoor dining that was created during the pandemic. Uh, same thing happening, by the way, in New York City. New York City, which was very accommodating to restaurants during the pandemic, now they're trying to shut down all these amazing, you know, outdoor seating that restaurants have. That, that in New York, you can only do it, um, you know, when the weather's nice, which is not that often. In California, you can do it year round. So regulations over the top, and then of course taxes over the top, and the more you make, the more you pay. And of course, during COVID, some of the, uh, uh, some of the most stringent restrictions, masks, there's now mask mandates all over California although I don't think they'll be enforced in Orange County. There's, uh, there's mask mandates all over California. Some of the most stringent requirements, statist requirements, were in California. So uh, what has happened over the last probably 30 years is that slowly and systematically, the, uh, the state is becoming less and less habitable. Uh, the price of electricity is through the roof. It's only going to get worse as California shuts down its one last uh, nuclear reactor and uh, mandates a shift to so-called, um, so-called, uh, what do you call them, um, <laughs> sustainable energy, you know, or, or as Alex Epstein uh, likes to call them, unreliable uh, energy sources. So you're going to have unreliable, we got rolling blackouts in California because of fires, which are a result of, to at least to some extent, of not clearing the forest floor because of environmentalists. You've just got this layering of regulations, controls, taxes, more regulations, more controls, taxes, uh, more environmentalist BS nonsense. And it just grows and grows and grows and grows. And uh, over the last few years, people have had enough. Now, at the same time, and maybe the thing that makes California most unlivable for most people is the fact that at the same time as people have wanted to move in because of all the pluses I mentioned, all the good things about California, all the upside that is involved in California, at the same time as that's happened, no houses are being built. Not in my backyard, it dominates places like San Francisco and the Bay Area and all over the place. Green, uh, green is, is, is king in California. So traffic is horrific because they don't build enough highways, they don't build double-deckers, they don't build tunnels, and they don't build enough homes. So real estate prices have been going through the roof. So California is just basically unaffordable to people. So now combine all that. And what you're seeing is the last several years, really the last decade or so, California net has been losing people. Now, it's interesting to ask the question, who primarily is leaving California? 
because the high end of the real estate market keeps going up. And uh, that means there's constant demand among relatively wealthy people, middle class, upper middle class people for more and more. So what is going on? Well, what's happening is that it's the lower middle class, it's the working class, it's the poor that are leaving California because they can't afford to live there. To, to be able to afford a house, if you're lower middle class in California, you have to live two hours away from your work. You have to commute for two hours in and out. And even then, your house is going to cost a lot of money. So people have been moving, and it turns out that during the pandemic, I think partially because of the restrictive nature of the pandemic, partially because people discovered they can walk from afar, partially because people just get fed up and they use the pandemic as, as a time to reevaluate their lives and to reevaluate where they want to live, and they just moved. Right? Uh, so since the beginning of the pandemic, California has lost population, uh, mostly because fewer people moved into California while at the same time, more people were leaving California. So net, California lost more people during the pandemic than they were losing before the pandemic. But primarily, the main driver was fewer people moving in. So uh, for years and years and years, in spite of the fact that people were leaving California, more people were moving in. Now, fewer people are moving in. All regions of California, every single county, saw steep declines in out-of-state entrance since the pandemic began, ranging from 25% to 45% fewer people coming in during the pandemic than before. Now, part of that is pandemic, part of that is taxes. Yes, some rich people have left, Ben Shapiro, Elon Musk, Larry Ellison, but the majority of people, there are not that many rich people in the world, the majority of people, the thing that drives statistics, are low-income people who can't afford to live in California anymore. It's, it's middle class, lower middle class people, working class people. It's not the rich. There are plenty of billionaires still in California. There are plenty and plenty of rich people still in California. One of the reasons you have massive labor shortages in California is really all over the country, but certainly in California, is because the people who take those jobs are moving out. Yeah, it's not true that productive people are moving out and illiterate uh, peasants are moving in. None of that is actually true. It's all BS, right? Productive people are moving in. Ambitious people who want jobs in Silicon Valley, who want to start companies, who want, uh, want to go to Hollywood, they're moving in. The people who are moving out are also productive people, but they tend to be productive people at the lower end. And you can... You can make statements, but the stats are just not on your side, guys. Uh, the fact is that it's the upper end that is moving in. It's, it's people getting high salaries that are moving in. It's Apple employees moving in. It's uh, new startup employees moving in. And they can afford the million, two million, three million, four million, five million dollar homes in California and drive up the prices upwards. So, no, I mean, I, 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 you guys, the idea that there are lots of uneducated, illiterate peasants in California is, uh, I think the technical term is bullshit. Um, the area where we've seen uh, the most damage, if you will, uh, the biggest decline uh, in number of people moving in and the biggest increase in number of people moving out is, is the Bay Area. Uh, the Bay Area, Santa Clara, San Mateo, and San Francisco counties. Uh, these are the counties of Silicon Valley. These are the counties of the tech industry. Uh, and you're seeing these pe people can't afford to live there anymore. Prices are unbelievably high. Uh, lower middle class people are moving out in droves. Uh, they're moving way out of the San Francisco area. But also a lot of tech people. Uh, it's true that Austin is becoming a tech hub. Other places, Arizona is becoming a tech hub. And people are looking for cheaper, better alternatives in terms of quality of life, and uh, they are moving out of these areas. Also, we'll talk about homelessness in a minute. 
These also areas, particularly San Francisco, plagued by homelessness. Um, again, a feature of the fact that people, low-income people, cannot afford homes, so they become homeless. Um, whereas somebody mentioned that they don't see any homeless people in Florida. Yeah, you don't see homeless people in Florida, partially because uh, there is a lot of low-income housing in Florida. There's cheap housing in Florida. Housing prices are way, way lower than they are in California. And because in Florida, um, uh, people, who, um, people who are poor do not get cuddled like they do in California. In California, for example, uh, your best way to get cheap housing is to be homeless for a period of time. And then wait until the mayor of Los and go to Los Angeles and then wait for the program that the mayor of Los Angeles has initiated to get housing for homeless people uh, to get that in, into gear. And there you go. You, you, you know, you get housing. So it's. Um, yeah. <laughs> Somebody who's lived in California. Uh, for many years, many years, Northern California and Southern California, uh, you know, I'm being accused that I don't see the masses. Oh, I see the masses. And the masses in California are unbelievably productive. California generally is an incredibly productive place. And then there's homeless people who cannot afford the housing. So the, again, the people leaving the state are people who can't afford housing. Some of them are leaving the state. Some of them are staying as homeless people. You don't get that in Florida. Partially because Florida does give massive benefits. Um, San Francisco and LA are Armageddon. They're not Armageddon. They're unpleasant if you're homeless. Uh, they're unpleasant because of all the homeless people. Uh, but I wouldn't call them Armageddon. Uh, it, it, there's still places where a lot of people, a lot of people love to live. Um, all right. Uh, it, it, it is sad, though, to see what's happening in San Francisco and LA and, and to see how many productive people are leaving, uh, how many people who are working and, and workers are leaving. Um, and uh, San Francisco, maybe one of the most beautiful, if not the, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, just to see uh, the dirt, the homelessness, the, the, the just, just everywhere. I mean, you know, homeless people always in San Francisco is always a problem, but it's been mu become much, much, much worse in the last 10 to five to 10 years, uh, and it's, it's truly tragic given how beautiful of a city it is. Uh, LA or San Francisco, being to San Francisco, well, San Francisco is a much, much more beautiful city than LA. Uh, it's not even close. LA is a pretty boring city. Uh, uh, San Francisco is a gorgeous city. Uh, unfortunately, they've both been so badly managed. They've both been so taken over by the left and their entire agenda that, um, You know that it's uh, that it's a sad place. Uh, it should be an amazing place, and unfortunately, it is a sad place. All right, let's see more stuff on California here. Um, let's see. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, Adam says, in, uh, where would we move from California? To Texas? If that abortion law is upheld, all limits on theocracy are off, all the better, uh, all the way to a prohibition against teaching evolution to minors. Um, anyone at the 10-year ten ten year bet? I have not seen any biotech labs moving out of Torrance. Yeah, I mean, I, I doubt biotech is moving to Texas. Uh, I doubt biotech is going to leave kind of Boston and California. I doubt science-heavy industries, um, including uh, some of the some of the technology science heavy places are leaving the Bay Area, leaving Stanford or Berkeley or leaving uh, or, or, or UC San Diego uh, or leaving uh, Boston uh, with Harvard and MIT there. So, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I agree with Adam. Um, I agree. Texas is not an ideal place at all. Um, and uh, it's a sad state where you have to choose between a leftist California or a theocratic Texas. Uh, that is that is truly, truly, um, it's truly sad. Uh, Derek asks, didn't Ayn Rand hate California uh, pre-Silicon Valley, uh, though pre-Silicon Valley? I don't know if she hated California. 
Uh, but she was in New York. She loved New York. I mean, that was a, that was the kind of thing she loved. Um, I don't think the Texas law is going to be upheld. Uh, I do think abortion is is finished. That is, I, I in Texas because I think what will happen is that uh, the Supreme Court will either. Uh, uh, you know, weaken Roe versus Wade or eliminate it completely, and Texas will just pass a plain vanilla ban on abortion. Uh, and uh, but this law that um, uh, law that Texas passed, I think, is going to go down in defeat. I, I don't think there's any way even the Supreme Court will approve it. I've already seen now um, uh, California wants to pass an anti-gun law that is similar to the Texas anti-abortion law which basically gives individuals the right to sue people um, if they violate uh, the law and instead of the state enforcing the law. Uh, and that's a way to get around the constitutional protection of the Second Amendment, just like Texas was hoping to get around the constitutional protection of Roe versus Wade. So it's going to be the whole thing, how this plays out with this court is going to be super interesting. But I think we can assume that in the next few years, uh, Roe versus Wade is out. I think, I don't think Cal uh, Texas law will stand. Uh, that whole mechanism that Texas came up with uh, for, for individuals to sue participants in an abortion, I think that's out, but abortion will be banned in Texas. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it'll be very hard to recommend going to live in Texas, uh, particularly if you're, if you're a young single woman. But that's the state of the world. There is no, there is no good out there. There's just uh, different versions of evil. And uh, we all kind of find, uh, hopefully, if you're open-minded and if you think about it and if you consider the possibilities, we're all kind of trying to figure out what is optimal for us individually based on our values. Uh, and uh, for some, it makes sense to go to Austin, Texas. Uh, for others, it makes sense to go to Puerto Rico. Uh, and for others, it makes complete sense to stay in California. And I completely understand people who stay in California. All right, let's. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.